Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwander and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the pleasure of meeting with Anthony Iannarino. He is the author of a famous blog called The Sales Blog. Welcome, Anthony. Hey, Gerhard. Good to see you. So let's talk about the larger economy. What is happening in your economy today so we can understand why so many buyers are reluctant to make a decision? It's interesting, Gerhard. I've been reading about this and I've been talking about it. And in one of the keynotes that I give, I bring up a chart of the United States gross domestic product. So that's the combination of all the goods, all the services, every bit of economic activity that goes on in the United States. And I've got the numbers in front of me so I can share them with you. In 2008, the U.S. economy was $14.7 trillion. At the end of the year, I remember very, very vividly what happened on October 1st because I own businesses and one of them was cut immediately in half when the recession really struck deep. And as deep as that recession was, in 2009, the economy shrank to the tiny, tiny infinitesimal $14.4 trillion. It dropped by $300 billion. Now, I'm not pretending that people didn't get hurt. I'm not pretending that people didn't lose their homes and that it wasn't an economic catastrophe. It was. There's no question. But it was still the second largest economy in the history of the world, and there was still $14.4 trillion of economic activity. 2010, $15 trillion. 2011, $15.5 trillion. 2012, last number we have good stats for, $16.244 trillion. So the economy improved by $1.5 trillion, right? Every year the economy's gone up with the exception of 2009. But post-financial crisis stress disorder has people believing that the economy is still shrinking, that we're still at great risk, that companies don't have money to buy, and that there's not economic activity, when in fact the global economy is now $80 trillion dollars there's more economic activity than at any time in history, but it doesn't feel like that. So the fact is that uh, that postpartum financial depression that we suffered those few years is very similar to the Great Depression of 1929, when people started habits that lasted for a generation, where people scrimped and saved all the time. So how can we counteract the psychology of fear that's prevailing in the marketplace to get people to realize that investing is a good thing. All buyers go through four stages, and we've known these stages for a long time. It starts with dissatisfaction, then it moves to a recognition of needs, and then they evaluate options. And at the end, they have a resolution of concerns. They deal with those fears. They think, if I spend this money, am I really going to get the result? If I spend this money, am I going to look good? Well, right now, what people are afraid of is they're going to spend the money and they're not going to get the result. And from my experience, what I see is even worse than that. They want to spend money, but they think they have to spend less money rather than more money. And salespeople are underserving and allowing their clients to underinvest by saying, look, I know you don't want to spend this much. Maybe you could spend a lesser amount. But by doing that, they're actually depriving them of the results that they need to really drive their business forward and really give them the advantage of buying what it is that they're selling. Here's what salespeople need to understand. The biggest thing that's got the status quo so entrenched in companies right now is this fear. It is this idea that there is no more money, that at any minute the economy could flip and go the other direction, and that they might be put out of business. And there's absolutely going to be another economic recession at some point in our future. No one knows when it will happen, and no one's going to be able to do anything to stop it. In the meantime, you have to run your business. So what salespeople need to be prepared to do is to say, look, let's address the risks. You're worried about execution. Let me make sure that I resolve every concern you have. And the most important question that salespeople need to ask in this stage of the sales cycle right now is, what do you need to see from me to be 100% convinced that this is the right decision for you? Don't guess at what they need to see. Maybe they need to tour your facility. Maybe they need references. Maybe they need an implementation plan. Maybe they need you to give them some sort of guarantee. Whatever it is, ask that question because you're never going to get them through that fear until you know what it is. But here's, here's my take. I think that uh, acknowledging the fear is a good thing. A reassurance is another good thing. But uh, I think it's good to point out what the bigger evil is. Uh, because when you cross in warfare a six-foot trench, you cannot do it in small steps because uh, uh, there are a lot of casualties in the trenches of people who took very tiny steps. 
So it's, I think it's a good idea to point out to the reluctant customer or the fearful customer that they're actually taking a greater risk by not making the decision, by not investing, by not moving forward. And fear is not a good guide to success. You got to have uncomfortable conversations and you got to go in and tell the truth because people are going to get hurt and lose their livelihoods if you don't go in and help. I like the idea of uh, having the courage to have an uncomfortable conversation with a customer. Yeah, I think it's fear and it's hope. I mean, these are the two driving forces for um, many economic decisions, fear and hope. And I think that both of those levers are important when you talk to people and you're in a sales situation. We've gone from irrational exuberance to a irrational fear. And now we have to get rational again. The economy is good. There's plenty of opportunity. We've got to go out and help clients understand that and take the right risks. Thank you, Anthony. Great conversation as always. Thanks, Gerhard. Good to see you.